Right, so once again, uh, night has snuck up on me. Uh, so it is night 126 for my attempt to plant a tree every day for 2023, which is probably for the best because uh, although it's coming into winter, the days are pretty harsh and hot and dry, and so then the cooler, it's often much cooler nights, are a much better time for planting for a lot of things. So uh, let's get on with it. Right, so today's planting is quite a nice simple one, but uh, I'm just gonna say that I have learned in today's watering that, that uh, a solid barrier to the north and west of a tender tree is a really good idea for anything that went in sort of after February-ish, I guess. Um, and so we're, we're trying to, to follow through with that here. So we're going to be putting this little Suriname cherry right to the south of quite a large bush of sickle bush. And there's quite a lot to the west of this as well, which should block out the winter sun pretty much throughout the afternoon. Uh, so this shouldn't really have to suffer at all from any afternoon sun. It will get a little bit of morning sun because there is a little opening that way, but that is really not nearly so harsh, so it shouldn't be so much of a problem. This is a forest edge species as far as I know in its natural habitat, uh, so, so it is in its natural habitat quite inclined to get quite a lot of sun, but I believe that is quite a lot lower lying and usually river lying. So, uh, so, so yeah, a little bit of adapting of it if its sort of environmental needs for its, its current environment is, is probably necessary. Going in with a Dracaena reflexa as a marker plant, this is mostly because I'm running really short of uh, Dracaena fragrance, which is much larger and more robust and much better at uh, coping going in at this time of year. The only one that I have a lot of stems that would still be suitable for markers for that is, is the much more drought sensitive variant, uh, Dracaena fragrance variant, Messangiana, I think. Um, but I'm also going to be putting in a piece of Alaniariensis. I should have used a pre-rooted piece, but unfortunately I'm not that organized. Uh, so we're just going to try and put it in the dry-ish layer of soil. So, so between the sort of top of the water getting to the base of the tree going in and the, the area where I water on top that will slowly soak through. Hopefully this fresh wound will have closed off by the time that gets down to its level. I'm also going to be putting in a few pieces of Kalanko Fetchenkoi, which should not only shade the soil a little bit more than the other two plants already will, um, and keep it from getting too hot while this is still small and its roots are still if they're very prone to overheating if the sun sort of cooks the top of the soil, uh, but it should also make it just a little bit less uh, desirable for chickens to come and sit here, because we are within an area where they will come and forage, because there's a lot of fallen guavas around here, and, and the chickens are very fond of fallen guavas. So yeah, so that should be everything for tonight. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you haven't enjoyed it, uh, thank you for watching this far anyway. Uh, please tune in again tomorrow. I will be planting something else. Not sure what yet. I have got an idea, but we'll see. Um, and I will also say please tune in as the review if you feel like finding out where everything is. Um, it's going to be a bit of a depressing one this week, so uh, just be warned.